Vous excusez-vous, Madame El-Kawabi? A meeting and an apology. I am extremely sorry for the way that my words have carried, how they have hurt the people of Quebec. A different tone from less than a week ago. I have nothing to apologize for. Emir al gawabi Canada's anti-Islamophobia representative, now saying sorry for how an opinion piece she wrote three and a half years ago was received. It criticized Quebec's controversial Bill 21. It bans public servants from wearing religious symbols like hijabs. In the piece, she referenced a poll that found 88 percent of Quebecers who held negative views of Islam supported the ban. She equated that to anti-Muslim sentiment. I believe she does not know Quebec. She does not know our history. The leader of the Bloc Quebec Quad demanded Al Gawabi meet with him. She called it constructive. As a member of Canada's Muslim communities, we know what it's like to be judged. And in the course of my efforts to bring awareness to the various ways that we face discrimination, the way that I describe that caused hurt. Not good enough, says the Quebec government. I'm glad that she apologized, but she still have to resign. The Prime Minister stands behind her appointment. What we need is a conversation about the fact that we all agree that rights and freedoms need to be protected. Clearly, it's, uh, it's about votes in Quebec. This advocate says anyone appointed to the role would hold the same view of Quebec's ban on religious symbols. And the job that needs to be done is to call out Islamophobia and uh, hate against Muslims across the country. And one of the biggest perpetrators of that in this country is the government of Quebec with, with its Bill 21 law. El Gawabi says she agrees to disagree with Quebec politicians on Bill 21. She says her focus is on creating a dialogue about the many issues facing the Muslim community, not just this one. Marina von Stackelberg, CBC News, Ottawa. My brothers and uh, sisters and friends, as I stand here to speak before you, it is fresh in my memory uh, that about a week ago, I was in the Islamic, uh, the International Muslim Organization in Rexdale, Ontario. Their uh, Minister of Diversity and Inclusion, Ahmed Hussein, uh, was uh, speaking to announce the appointment of a special representative uh, for combating uh, Islamophobia in this country. That would be a special representative to the government and uh, he announced the choice uh, of our sister Amira al ghababi Many of you know her from her many uh, articles published in the Toronto Star and for her activism in many different ways. We see that this is a positive uh, move uh, on the part of Canada. It shows inclusion, it shows uh, recognition of what Muslims have been going through and uh, suffering from, uh, namely Islamophobia. Uh, we, it recognizes that uh, there was a family mowed down by a truck in London, Ontario uh, not too long ago. Uh, it recognizes uh, that not too long before that, uh, six Muslims were shot and killed in their mosque in, in Quebec. And in fact, on that occasion, we wore some tiny green patches. Uh, those tiny green patches, as explained by Amira al ghawabi when she had a chance to speak, a representative of the fact that in the mosque, they were not able to completely wash off the blood from the carpet. So eventually they had to cut out that part of the carpet. So this little patch that we were wearing uh, was signifying the green cut out patches from the mosque carpet where the blood of our slain uh, brothers had uh, been spilled. So it was an emotional moment for many of us. We celebrated that, but not long after that, we started to hear news of uh, some officials in Quebec opposing this uh, appointment, uh, saying that uh, uh, Sister Amira had uttered uh, some uh, statements against uh, Jews and against uh, Quebec and against the police. And when this all were uh, investigated, it turned out that all she said, and she wrote together with uh, Bernie Farber, a, a Jewish uh, protagonist, uh, in a joint article that they wrote, they were citing a, a, a previous census that showed that 88% uh, uh, of people in Quebec uh, had some anti-Muslim uh, views. So all, all they were doing were, were citing that article, the two of them together in a joint article, a Muslim 
and a Jew together citing that study. But no, that suddenly became a calling point uh, for them to ask for the resignation uh, of uh, uh, our, our sister. So we have to wonder, uh, was that call for her resignation also part of that same sort of Islamophobia that she was in the first place appointed uh, to advise the Canadian government about? <coughs> now, uh, we Muslims are often silent, we're not active. We tend to be proactive. Somebody says something and then we respond. But we Muslims have to be proactive. And we have to show the world that uh, we Muslims are here in harmony with the world. Our religious teachings are in harmony with the world, not against the world. In the third chapter of the Quran, Allah tells us, Kuntum linnas. You are the best nation that has been raised up for humankind. The commentators on the Quran say that the four here, uh, the Lama Ta'lil, for those of you who like to uh, investigate the Arabic grammar, and know Brother Muhammad Asif has been teaching Arabic, so he will teach me. Uh, so this shows a purpose. The Muslim nation has been raised up for a purpose. It's for the benefit of humankind. We're not against anyone, but we're for their benefit. The chief benefit that we can uh, confer on anyone uh, is that guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Our sharing that with somebody else will inshallah help them in their everlasting life in the future. Not, it's not a momentary benefit, but it's for all eternity. So we are here for their benefit, but that's not the only benefit. A random act of kindness to anyone, whether it is a human or an animal, or whether we care for the environment, all of this fall within the purview of Islam. 